Hello and welcome back to my face and another World of Tanks game. Today we're going to be doing the Hurry Free, the new tier 10 Japanese TD that just came out all of a week ago. I'm going to kind of tell you how you can play it, how I'd play it, recommend you some equipment, some field mods, and then kind of show you what it can do if you get lucky in a game like this. So, let's get right into it basically. This tank reminds me very, 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 very much of the two German TDs we currently have in the tech tree, the Jagdpan 100 and the Gorilla. It kind of feels like it borrows aspects from each. The gun of the Gorilla with the kind of armor layout and the kind of overall appearance of the Jagdpan 100. It's a bit of an enigma in that sense. It, it's really quite impressive. It has statistics which do allow it to brawl. It has statistics which do allow it to snipe. So, you can see why I, I figure that it kind of borrows bits from each of those tanks. But, yeah. Anyway, into the statistics a little bit before we get back to the replay. DPM. This tank has 3.5k DPM. This is fully tricked out using bond vents and basically everything bond, really. So, I'll get into the equipment at the end. Um, I like to keep it towards the end to keep it simple. Um, 700 alpha. Good. You can't go wrong with 700 alpha, can you, really? It... It punishes. It's like 60 TP, but all a slight little bit. Um, yeah. You know, you could, when you've basically tricked this full, fully out, you can get it down to 11.94 seconds reload. For 700 alpha, that's pretty incredible. With that 3.5k DPM, you really do punish people, you know. They peak, you can punish them, and yeah, it, it just seems to work. It's just that kind of nice amount of alpha and, you know, it works, basically, as you're going to see, anyway. Um, 2.3 seconds aim time. It's pretty much Gorilla-esque, like I said. Um, 0.29 dispersion. It's very Gorilla-esque. If, if you know the Gorilla and play the Gorilla, you'll know its gun can be very trolley. And this tank is very similar, it feels. It can be very good. It can also be very kind of iffy, and it does sometimes some very random things, which is unfortunate, but I... It's one of the balancing factors of this tank is it's gun being a little bit unreliable and a little bit kind of toying cossy. So yeah, it's not great, but it does work. You have seven degrees of gun depression, so you can kind of work a ridge, but not really. You know, it's kind of that kind of awkward amount. But you do have really nice HE, sorry. 900 alpha with 90 pan HE. That is, you're just going to punish people if they exist and you can pen them. So, a bit of a low roll there uh, for Z-Grain, you know, you roll for 832, that's pretty pretty shit low roll, not gonna lie. Um, but, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, for standard shells, you've got standard pan of 305, gold pan of 360, gold pan of 360 is just gorgeous. Anything above 340 is just incredible. You can just pen so much more stuff than you can pen if you have 330, 340. It just, it just works. I don't know why, it's just that kind of overmatch ability. It works. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to quickly pause it here. So we can kind of just discuss this tank's armor model. Because it's interesting. Essentially, when you're playing against this tank or playing this tank, you want to basically hide every bit of your hull. And if you're playing against it, shoot its hull. Because its hull is weak. In its strongest points, which is like here, from the front arm... It's 200. So if you have a high enough alpha gun, you can overmatch this here. But just shoot this whole part here, and you can pen it. Do not shoot its lower plate. It's a shot catch. It will bounce. It will ricochet. But if you're tier 8, you can pen pretty reliably its hull. Do not shoot its cheeks unless you have over 300 pen. You probably want 330, 340 pen to be able to shoot this tank in its cheeks and pen it reliably. Because it has 300 flat all over the cheeks. It has 300 flat all over. So unless you have 330, 340, don't really bother shooting them. Just aim for the hole if you can. Also, if you're front on, you see how there's a little bit of angled armor here. Don't shoot that front on. It'll ricochet. It's a shot catch. But if you're side on, yeah, go for it. Anywhere side on works, basically, apart from shooting here. And once again, if you have high enough, high enough alpha, you can overmatch this, but... Why well, you just shoot this, you're going to pen it. Um, but yeah, anyway, back on with the replay after I've kind of analysed the armour a little bit for you. Um, yeah, 
it's nice. It's that kind of nice mix between I can snipe, but I can also brawl, providing I can hide my hole. So this kind of situation is pretty good for, for Z here. He can play on a ridge, use the seven degrees of gun depression, and kind of hide his hull. And he's forcing people to be able to snipe at him from long range at his hull, so he's got a better chance of it not hit him. You can see what I mean when I say about the gun. It does remind me a little bit of the 114 SP2 for any of you ranked gamers which managed to get the 114. Its gun can be laser accurate, but then it will just miss the odd shot very randomly, and it's frustrating. It reminds me of this. That's why I'm not going to go get the high roof free, which is why I've kind of borrowed another replay off someone else, because it's not my kind of playstyle. But I did want to do a, re a video on it, because I, people have asked me how to set it up, whether it's worth going for, and I kind of hope this kind of tells you what you can do in it, and kind of highlights its strengths, and you, you know... We're less than five minutes in, and Z has already managed to farm 5.3k. That's both kind of contributed to by its good DPM and its good alpha, and the fact that the enemies have kind of been a bit pagerish, kind of just drove at him or drove out. But when you've got 700 alpha, if they're doing that, you're punishing them for a third of their health most of the time. So, you know, it's that kind of nice amount that just works, you know. But yeah. Anyway, on with this replay, let's kind of bring it back a little bit. You know, we're on proc, full tier 10 game, there's two RTs, there's, you know, two lights. It's a pretty nice matchup, you've got to say here for Z. You know, his lights are playing this kind of poorly. The Mantis managed to establish the E1 bush. His team have managed to kind of win the 789 line, but have arguably kind of lost the 1 2 line, but are kind of holding it. Looks like so far the enemy team have kind of tried to take mid and push over hill. Didn't really work for them, so yeah. At this situation, this, at this point, for Z, he's playing this well. He's moving up into a position to be able to get the red line on the K1, K123 into render. Because you can see that his Manti's going to go and spot the line. They've got an EBR in mid, they've got a 430U pushing under, and this is perfect by him. Basically, he's playing the mid ridge so he can farm the damage that is coming for him. But, that's what you can do in this tank, because it's not slow. 45 forwards for a TD of this kind of size with this kind of amount of armor. <clears throat> Only really the V4 kind of beats it. So it's nice. It's good. And you go 20 in reverse as well, which is nothing to be sniffed at. And you can see that gun there. You know, auto-aiming a little bit bad from Z there, but I can understand why he's done it. Uh, it's an EBR, but it can be tricky. But... He's already up 7.3k here, and we're really not that long into the game here. We're only like 7 minutes in, as you can see. Shooting the cheeks there, you want to have that 360-ish pen. You know, unless you're a TD or an STB1 or a 121B, stuff with good heat or kind of gold pen, I would not bother shooting the cheeks. Because you will struggle to pen it. Especially when this tank's hull is so big. And very weak. I just wouldn't try it. It's it's a lot easier just to shoot the giant goddamn hull than it is to shoot the cheeks anyway. So if you have a shot in its whole tank, just shoot the, the hull. You're going to hit it. It's fucking massive. And this tank is huge. It's massive. So you're going to struggle to miss it. It's like E100-esque size. It's, yeah, pretty fucking big. But, kind of to give my thoughts on the overall tech tree, I've not particularly played the, any of the other Japanese ones, but I've seen quite a few replays and I've gone and watched quite a few replays to kind of gather an understanding. The T8, 9 and 10 play very similarly. So the Hori 1, 2, 3, I think it goes the Hori 1, Hori 2, 1, 3, uh, T8, 9, 10. Um, they play kind of similarly to each other. And then the tier 5, 6, 7 are all kind of typical lower tier kind of TDs. Play a little bit like a Dickamax, if people know the Dickamax. Play a little bit like more passive, more snipey, but their guns do have the dispersion and the aim time to be able to hit their shots. They can play as that more passive TD. Whereas this tank has, it trades a little bit more of that kind of gun handling, which still has really good gun handling for more armor and ability to play kind of on the front lines, and that's insane. Aziz just Amorak to Fosh for 1.5k to get himself 11k. Well, that's RNG for you, right? But yeah, 
Anyway, I'm going to quickly now show you the uh, the equipment and the field mods that I recommend for this tank. Take them as you wish. Don't listen to me. But, yeah, I recommend what I recommend. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know what you think of it in the comments. Give it a like, sub, you know, all of the usual shiller stuff. Um, but, yes, I'm streaming as well on Twitch, Mondays, Thursdays. Come and watch. I'd love to see you there. Um, but, yeah, equipment, field mods now. Bye.